Hello again. Uh, still working in an exponential functions here uh, in order to introduce you to logarithmic functions. And we did one where we did graphs. Well, now we're going to do one where we do expressions to simplify because it will help us with the techniques in order to solve logarithmic functions. So here we go. Uh, again, nice little review, although they're difficult problems now. When you see something like this, where you have the same base and they're being multiplied, you add the exponents. So 2 to the power of uh, square root of 5 times 2 to the power of square root of 3. If it's at 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 3rd, it would be 2 to the 5th. You just add them up. Well, you do the same thing here. You add them up. The problem is that you can't add up the square root of 5 and the square root of 3. So if you want to simplify this with one base, it would be 2 to the power of square root 5 plus square root of 3. And that's pretty much all you can do. Uh, here, let's say we had 2 to the 5 to the 3rd. That would be 2 to the 15th. Well, you do the same thing here, um, except now they're roots. And if you can combine them, you can combine them. So this is 2, and root 5 times root 3 is root 15. And you can't do anything with root 15. That's pretty much all there is to it. I suppose you can write 15 to the... No, actually, you don't want to do that. That would be more difficult. That's all you really need to do right there. And that's all you need to do right there. Now if I look at this next one, 3 to the 2n plus 1 equals 81. There are ways to solve this um, that you're going to need to employ. You're going to need to understand these tactics. Basically what you're going to have to figure out is what the n is going to be in order to make this true. And actually I can probably guess already. 3 to what power equals 81? Well let's see, 3 to the first is 3, 3 to the second is 9, 3 to the third is 27, 3 to the fourth is 81. So 3 to the 4th is 81. Well, so now I've got to figure out what my n is going to be in order to make that true. Then we'll figure out what that is. But I'm going to show you a technique in order to solve this properly. 3 to the 2n equals 81, if you want to solve it properly, is 3 to the 2n plus 1. The reason why you can't solve this is because the bases of, these, uh, of this equation are the same. This is a 3 and this is an 81. 81 is the same thing as 3 to the 4th. And if you don't believe me, split the number 81 if you'd like to. And you do this, 81 is 9 and 9, 3 and 3, 3 and 3. So 3 to the 4th is 81. And if you don't know that yet, you should just split it up. It makes it a lot easier. Now what's very interesting is this. When you have an equation like this, where you have a base on one side equaling a base on another, and they're the same, you can cancel them out. Actually, what you would do is take the log of 3 on both sides. But since we haven't actually introduced that yet, it's fine. What I tell my students is, well, you have a base on one side with an exponent, and it's equal to a base on another side with an exponent. There's no addition or subtraction of bases. It's just one base equaling another, and they're the same base. All you do is you cancel them out, excuse me, cancel them out, and you get 2n plus 1 equals 4. And you go ahead and you simplify for n. Subtract 1, subtract 1, 2n equals 3. Divide by 2 on both sides. n equals 3 halves, which is pretty interesting. It is the answer, uh, and I'll show you how. If n is 3 halves, 2 times 3 halves is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 to the 4th is 81. It really does work, and it's really quite cool. And we got this another one where we have uh, two bases, and not, neither of them are simplified. Well, what you want to do is you want to simplify them. Uh, this is a base of 4, this is a base of 8. And they can be both simplified and as a base of 2. 4 is the same thing as 2 to the second. And it's all to the 2x. 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And it's to the x minus 1. Well, what you do is very simple. 2 times 2x is 4x, so it's 2 to the 4x equals 3 times x is 3x. 3, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. This is just like that former problem where if we have the same bases and it's 1 on each side, we can just cross them out. Actually, what you're doing is you're taking the log of a base 2 on both sides, like I said before. But since we haven't learned logs yet, that's fine. And students can still do this without knowing anything about logs, which is actually so cool about this. And you get 4x equals 
3x minus 3. Subtract 3x on both sides. x equals negative 3. Now that is in fact correct. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Uh, 3 minus, I'm oh, sorry, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So that's 4 to the negative 6 equals 8 to the negative 4, which is the same thing as 2 to the second to the negative 6, and 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third of negative 6. Oops. Ooh. Negative 4. And 2 to the negative 6 is negative 12. 3 to the negative 4th is 12. So they're both equivalent. It's quite cool. Or you can just plug it into a calculator and figure it out that way. But that was a basic introduction into what an exponential graph looks like and how to solve for exponential problems without even using logarithms. Uh, next, we're going to focus on logarithmic graphs, um, inverting the x and the y, etc., and really getting into logarithms. Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.